Howdy folks, Doc here with Last Best Tool. And this is kind of like a Honey, I Shrunk the Tools video. What I'd like to do is show you what I think are, are multiple layers of, sh of shrinking, and then a couple of tools that I wish uh, were shrunk even further. Now, um, obviously with the reduction in uh, Snap-on's uh, kind of combination needle nose plier here, you know what, I thought, you know, there is room for one more, one more down below this one. Um, and I wish, I've mentioned it in other videos, that they had a triple joint here for this tiny one. This is the smallest kind of realistic, what you'd think would be a triple joint. And this I'm gonna use to kind of to represent what might be the regular small and then the micro small or the super small or possibly the absurdly small. And Knipex takes their small seriously here. They have produced both an excellent small pliers wrench and Cobra, but then they took it one step further and produced an even smaller one, having to redesign the system, you know, their, their adjustment system. So they took it even further to what some thing are, think is absurd, um, that it's just too small to actually be functional. Well, we don't know that until we're down in that area. Um, a lot of times though, like here's a couple of uh, snap-on and a blue point uh, adjustable wrench. Um, this would be probably the smallest usable wrench for most things, but there is a smaller one um, that's available. Um, you just, you run out of leverage, you run out of jaw. Um, here is, uh, one where I think there could be another smaller level. Um, these are the Knipex Cobalts, and this is actually pretty small, as you can see in my hand, tiny little head, here's my thumb. Um, but because of the power here, I think they could drop it down at least to uh, a 125, but maybe even a 100. Wouldn't that be nice to have a 100 sized Cobalt or Cobalt? for cutting things, I mean, just you'd have a lot of power. No, it wouldn't be a big one because it's not. It's a tiny one, but there, there are a lot of times where this easily snips through it. So that means that leverage wise, we could have gone with a much shorter, shorter version. Um, Snap-ons wound down on their, um, their talon grip needle nose, which is great. You know, you almost get down to where it's hard to operate, but I think there's one more level below this one that they could actually go to without going to their super fine points. Obviously with the pick sets, you know, you can see totally different. Uh, it turns out when they shrunk the picks, you know, I love these things. I use these way more than I use the larger ones. Um, you can see where like Vera has taken a handle design and just threw it in the dryer and shrunk it down. Um, and you still get some of the benefits that you do with this one. It, it does operate differently, but they're exploring it. So they shrunk it um, both in length and in diameter. Here's one where Knipex really took themselves seriously again um, with their, their multipliers and they shrunk it way down. Now this here, if you compare it to that, where did one of those 70s or one of those hundreds go? This one here is a 110, so technically I guess you can make a 110 Cobalt, but that just is an outstanding size, fully functional. They did have to go with the larger handle here, you know, since you were really prying on the thing, um, if you were using the cutters, but they took themselves seriously and went from what would be a small plier, you know, compared to say this giant Klein lineman, uh, a small plier down to a tiny little multi-plier. Excellent idea. Um, pry bars, similar to the picks, you know, took a similar idea and just scaled it way down. So, um, you know, vice grips, standard small, and then way small. You know, these are tiny little vice grips, but you can see this one almost goes to the absurd, except it turns out it's super handy. Uh, scaling down, you know, wrench ideas like Vera did here. So let's take a look at a couple. I would love to see a small version of this kind of narrow beaked Cobra. Now, if you look at this Cobra here, um, it has gone with a, a fairly narrow one, but um, you could actually change the beak a little bit and give it more of a needle nose and a narrow. Um, I thought about that using these, except um, I often don't want the parallel. You know, I want this kind of a closure. So I think they could take this, this beak design and 
um, leave the traditional cobra, where did I put that? Cobra kind of parrot jaw and go with something more of a sparrow. I think that would be really handy if, you, if they had that option. So you can see, you know, they, sh they shrunk the narrowness down um, or the thinness here. And, but I, I really like these things because it gives you um, kind of some advantages of having a stout enough bolt grabber here, but then narrow enough to dig in kind of like a needle nose. Um, however, a couple of big ones, I would love to see a double small of this, you know, going that size and then going down again. Might not be possible with that jaw, but I don't think, I mean, the head is already pretty small. So you could go with a, uh, a little bit smaller head and some um, smaller handles. And I think that would be ideal. Just a, an outstanding design is to shrink this one down. But this is the one that really I would be excited about. This is the, the Knipex Raptor. It's 8741250. And this is only available, as far as I know, in this size. And this is the full size. You know, the 250, same like the 250 Cobras. But I would love to see a smaller version of something like this, at least down to the 125. That would be ideal. And why I'm thinking this is because there are a lot of kind of multi-tools, kind of one-off, um, you know, not Leatherman, but, you know, that kind of form factor, um, that are going after a um, kind of a, like a this Raptor head, this bolt-grabbing head with some sort of an adjustment. You've probably seen videos on things like that. They're all over the place, so the evolution is, is in full swing. But Knipex has already nailed this. Why couldn't they just shrink that down and end up giving us um, a really powerful, tiny tool? Because once, you're, once you've grabbed onto something, um, especially with this handle design, um, you know, that you don't have to keep it closed or you don't have to hold it closed. Instead, it's just all the leverage that you could put on it. Um, and I haven't heard any of these small ones breaking and people are using them for all kinds of different things that, you know, were way beyond their pay, pay grade. Um, but anyway, that's what I think. I would love to see um, some of these other tools go one step further down because there are some advantages once we shrink those down. Um, I also wanted to, while you're here, show you this. This is a, a pair of Kleins I've had for a while. Um, I, I prefer the heavier kind of multi-component or um, comfort grip. But it, this one I just absolutely loved. It was silky smooth. So I was trying to think of how I could test these things to see, uh, you know, what's actually going on. Um, where is that? I want to make sure I'm not on the, on the rivet here. Um, and uh, what I was thinking is, you know, how could I measure the tip, I like the, the, the tipping of it. So here's zero, and as I start to tip it, at what point does it start sliding? And this one is under 20 degrees. You know, if I start, whoops, start to tip that, it's a little hard to see because it changes right away, but 12, 13, 14, 15, I don't know, between 15 and 20 degrees because this is just so silky smooth. So I was trying to think of how, how it would be possible to measure something like that because it's just so nice, amazing. Love these pliers for that reason. But anyway... So that's what I've got for you today. If there are other pliers or even in fact other tools, you know, notice I don't have any tiny hammers, um, although I do like the little ones, but you need a long handle. Um, any other tools you'd like to see shrunk down, I'd love to know because I think there are, there's a lot of uh, movement in the tool industry to be innovative. There's, they're being pushed right now. For a while, it seemed to be a little stagnant, you know, go on the trucks or to the stores and only around Christmas you saw the really unique things, and most of those were kind of one-offs that nobody expected much from. But instead, now we're seeing a big push trying to really pull, uh, you know, the best of all worlds and combine them into the most higher performance one. In fact, I used this one the other day for reaming some one and a half inch conduit, and I just stuck this thing in, and maybe it was one inch, and was just grinding around. And it actually did a reasonable job. It doesn't have the sharp, super sharp edges um, that a lot of uh, electrical pliers do. But it worked well for that. Plus, I could get into smaller areas and, and kind of dig around to get off burrs and things. But anyway, that's what I've got. Let me know what pliers or other tools you'd like to see shrunk. I think uh, the industry needs to know. And with that, Doc out.